What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. I'm here at CES. We are taking a look at the Zephyrus G16. And I've got the Zephyrus G16 right here in my arms that I've been using now for over six months. And this is the RTX 5070 version, though I was using the 5090 version for a little while. And we're going to talk about all of this and how this version of the Zephyrus G16 stacks up against the new 2026 version, uh, which I got my hands on for an extended period of time uh, yesterday. And I even got these side by side. So we're going to talk about all the new features and all the new improvements, which are going to actually translate into better battery life and significantly better gaming performance even though the silicon like the nvidia gpu is still the same ones it's just going to run at higher power limits which means more performance so let's get into this now i got to give a big shout out and thank you to asus for sponsoring this trip now no brand will ever be able to control my content and that goes for this one asus is not even previewing this video i get to upload it straight so big shout out and thank you to them if you value honesty and transparency in your tech reviews please consider subscribing down below let's talk about my experience utilizing this zephyrus g16 which is a review unit from asus this has generally been a very good experience with one major bug which was the nvidia drivers certain versions were crashing a lot. So I had to use NVIDIA driver 577.00 and then the crashing pretty much went away and it's been running for weeks without crashing now, but it was crashing almost every single day when it was using the latest NVIDIA driver. So we don't know if this is an Asus problem or an NVIDIA problem, but it needs to be addressed because eventually I'm going to want to update the drivers and not be stuck on that driver. But other than that, it's been a phenomenal experience. Lightweight, portable, can play all the games I want to play, especially for the speakers and the multimedia consumption. It's just a really great all-around laptop. Very, very portable and still lots of performance. So the thing about the 2026 version that really stands out to me, Asus managed to keep this laptop essentially the same size and weight. It only got 0.01 inches thicker, from 0.69 inches to 0.70 inches. It's a very minimal size increase and it stayed the same 4.3 pounds weight but it went up to 160 watts. Under realistic loads, I'm pretty sure I was getting more like 110, 115 watts in a lot of video games on the G16. Even though Asus is claiming 160 watts, that's under like ideal scenario. So I'm not actually expecting 160 watts under dual load scenarios. That's with NVIDIA boost, dynamic boost, boosting us all the way up to 160. So the base is probably gonna be more like 145 or 150 that you're gonna be able to get in more games and titles is what I'm anticipating, but hopefully 160 will be achievable, at least in certain very GPU bound games. One of the reasons why I switched from the 5090 to the 5070 Ti is that the 5090 was only 12.8% faster in the 2025 Zephyrus G16. When I did my performance analysis comparing the, the 5070 Ti, the 5080 and the 5090, but the price jump is huge, jumping between those three different models. So this year, because the 5080 and 5090 can use up to 160 watts, you're talking like a pretty significant performance boost over the 140 watts that the 5070 Ti can pull. So the 5070 Ti is gonna be able to get to the max cap and that's gonna be great for its value. It's gonna be a better performer all around. But the 5080 and 5090 are just gonna be probably 10% faster than the 2025 version, if I were to guess. And the 5070 Ti being able to go up to that 140 cap all the way should be notably faster as well. Probably like five to 10% faster between the two 5070 Ti versions from 2025 to 2026. Like how Asus did this, keeping the laptop the same size and weight, and yet they still managed to get more power to the GPU. They say that they increased the airflow underneath the laptop, primarily by adding vents at the rear and changing the whole undercarriage to be a better overall airflow design. But I think it's a bit more than just that. I think the new Intel silicon that's two nanometer is supposed to be significantly more power efficient. So I'm thinking they're gonna be able to shift more wattage away from that CPU and boost that GPU at a greater degree. And this is one of the reasons why they decided to stick with Intel on these new Zephyrus G16 and G14 laptops. According to some of the product managers I've been talking with, 50% more power efficient while putting out the same levels of performance. I mean, we actually have to do real world tests here to see if that's actually true, but battery life and potentially gaming on battery life if you're doing USB-C gaming, which is another can of worms because this actually has the 385H processor instead of the X9388H. I think if this is the right CPU, but that one has a much better integrated GPU. So USB-C gaming is probably actually gonna be better on the 2025 version than the 2026 version because it has the Intel Arc 140T on the 2025 version with the Intel Core Ultra 9 285H. And that's just gonna put out some really good 
integrated gaming performance for gaming on battery life for like two to three hours in one go. Unfortunately, the new 2026 version, the iGPU has been neutered. So USB-C gaming is probably only gonna be capable of really, really old titles, legacy titles, or uh, jumping over to the NVIDIA GPU, keeping that on when you're on USB, and you're probably gonna only get like an hour and a half of gaming performance. The most important thing here though, is that you're gonna get, I think, better real life performance when on battery life. And because the new Intel CPU is that much more power efficient, when under dual loads, you're basically able to just to use the 40 watts, 50 watts that the CPU was pulling, and that drops down to probably 20, 25 watts, maybe 30 watts under heavy CPU load. And now that extra CPU wattage is gonna be going to the GPU instead. At least that's my current theory of how they managed to do this. But so let's talk about that Intel Core Ultra 9 386H. We've got 16 cores, 16 threads, that's four performance cores, eight efficiency cores, and four NPU high efficiency cores for you know, lightweight AI tasks. The reports I've heard on this CPU is that the multitasking performance is about the same as the 285H, so not really much improvement there. I'm hoping the single threaded performance has been improved, but they were kind of implying that it wasn't, but in theory, I would think it would be better because you only got four performance cores, it's at two nanometer. But the main thing they were saying is that just power efficiency is just so much better. It was like, they were saying it's like 50% more power efficient, but the same performance. If, that's, if they managed to pull that off, that's still really, really good in a laptop chassis because more power efficiency means more performance when on battery life, more performance when pushing lower and quieter fans. So we'll have to actually see how that all translates into real world benchmarks, but it could be very transformative for an ultra portable gaming laptop like the Zephyrus series. The ports on this have stayed exactly the same. You get one Thunderbolt 4 with display port out with 100 watts power delivery. You get another USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 with display port support and 100 watt power delivery. That second one, the non-Thunderbolt one on the right side is going be hooked directly to the NVIDIA GPU with G-Sync out. So if you need to have a G-Sync monitor supported, that's the one you're gonna wanna use. Now you get two USB-A 3.2 Gen 2s and a full-size SD card slot, as well as an HDMI out. And then you get a headphone combo port and a reversible Asus power plug, though I hope that the new power plug is a little bit tighter fit because the 2025 version has a little bit of a wobble to it. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth have been improved to Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 6.0. And the keyboard backlighting has also been improved with less lettering and it seems like a little bit brighter keycap backlighting. So hopefully they've finally got that all figured out. I certainly was impressed in the show floor, but actually I have to see how it looks when I get it actually in for a full review. Now, they also managed to improve the screen. You're going up to 1,000 nits peak brightness when in HDR mode, and then up to 500 nits sustained brightness, which is quite a bit better than the 2025 version, which only had 400 nits within a sustained brightness test. So 25% brighter screen, and it, they're claiming a million to one contrast ratio, which I've never had a laptop test that high, so I actually have to see if that remains true when I get this tested with my Spider 5 Elite. Now, the other thing, because the new Intel chip is more power efficient, I'm thinking we're gonna get better battery life. You know, under typical battery life workloads, like lots of browsing tabs, maybe doing DaVinci Resolve video editing, I was getting between like four to six hours on average, depending on how heavy of tasks I was doing. Um, and for USB-C gaming, I was getting about two and a half to three hours, depending on how heavy of the gaming, which game it, games it was and how bright it was and all that, you know. The new version, should be quite a bit better on battery life. I'm gonna actually have to do some real world testing though, because that's really the key. Real world testing trumps, I think, the synthetic playing of video for seeing how many hours a video can play or something like that. Because real world testing is just so much different than um, just a synthetic test. So overall, I'm really excited about the 2026 version because of the increased GPU power limits and the new improved battery life, as well as the new and brighter screen. All three of those things are significant improvements so that if you, if you do have the money, the new version will probably be worth it, especially if you're gonna get the 5070 Ti, 5080, or 5090 version. The 5070 and 5060 versions, they're gonna basically be the same level of performance on the GPU front, because they were already maxed out on the GPU wattage, but the new Intel CPU should still improve battery life and general performance efficiency when uh, you know on the go. If you're gonna go for the 5060 or 5070 version, it's not as big of an upgrade as the new higher powered 5070 Ti, 5080, or 5090 versions. So that's it for this comparison. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next one. Brandon, out. No, no.